So, where should we start? Let me see. I think that's the best place, don't you? That's? First, the entry fee. There. Two euros, it can't... <laughs> doesn't cost a lot, whatever it is. Da -da 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 -da. This is the... Kiyomizu Dera, the most famous temple in Kyoto. Dash Dera, a Japanese f suffix meaning temple. Kiyomizu Dera. They say the... They say... Kiyomizu Dera was completed before Kyoto became the capital, in the year 778. Before Kyoto was the capital? There are temples that old? Kiyomizu Dera is known for how the main hall that juts out of the side of the mountain. The main hall has been rebuilt over and over due to fires, but the last rebuild was in 1633, so it's still quite old. It was still built around 400 years ago then. It's standard for stone buildings of America and Europe to survive that long, but for these eastern wooden structures to last so long shows the care that goes into them. I know! Do you know the Japanese phrase, jump from the stage at Kiyomizu? Meaning plunge head first into something? The stage at Kiyomizu? It refers to this building? Yes! They say if you screw up your college if they if you screw up your courage and jump from here, your wish will come true. They say that in the old days, many men really would make the jump to show their determination. From here? But it's... it's really far down. Yes, they say some people really died trying it. Honestly, men are such idiots. I can't help but agree with you there. I'm hardly the greatest ambassador for mankind. As long as we're here, why don't you try jumping? I mean, let's go to the uh, Toa waterfall below. The Atoa Waterfall? Yes, it's a small waterfall consisting of three narrow streams. The waterfall has existed for over 1,000 years. Back then, people said the water would confer wealth or long life. They loved it. It's the Fountain of Youth. The Fountain of Youth? Okay, let's check it out. That's... a waterfall? Whoa! There really are free trials of water here. Each stream confers its own blessings. From right to left, they confer academic success, health, and love, respectively. Academics, health, and love. So then, starting from the right, I take the water from each and drink it? Okay, let's start with the water of academics. Now the water of health, then the water of love. <laughs> Whew. It's delicious. It really could be the fountain of youth. Da -da 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 -da. You know, that's coming from... No, I'm not even going to make any jokes about where that water's coming from. Yeah, none of us are impressed by this. Huh? Now that I think about it, you guys only drank from the health and love springs. What about... and none from the academic one? How come? Ah, uh, well... Right? <laughs> yes. But what? You both look so serious. The truth is, it's said that anyone greedy enough to try and drink from all three rivers will be denied their blessings. Oh, so you can do without education. I can see. I see where you two, you, these two are coming from. What? Wait, is that true? Yes, I'm sorry to say. N no way! Why didn't you tell me that earlier? Because that would have made it much. Because that would have made it so much less funny. Sorry about that. Mm. So I didn't earn any blessings today. Ah, I could have used the blessings in love at least. Yeah, you could. Creepy guy like you. <laughs> uh. Then now that I think about it, Makoto and Akira both drank from the love spring. Dot, 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 dot. I'm really worried about where this game is going to head. First, the entry fee there. 
Now our next Kyoto sightseeing spot is here. Whoa! This is the Kinkaku-ji. G, as Japanese suffix meaning temple, an alternative reading of Dera. Kinkaku. The Ken, <coughs> the Ken and Kintaku, and Kinkaku is a reference to the grand and golden color of the temple. The name is actually a nickname. What's its real name? I know it. It's Ro Rokuanji, right? That's right. You really know your stuff, Akira. Hold your applause until the end. I still know lots more about the Rokun Rokuanji. Then why don't you tell us all about it, Akira? Hehe, <laughs> leave it to me! The fact is, there was already a temple here in the 13th century, but the noble who commissioned it was put to death for conspiring against the Emperor and it fell into ruin. Then around the t end of the 14th century, the Shogun Ishikaga Yoshimitsu, I Ishikaga Yoshimitsu fixed it up and built a new temple, which he called the Rokuanji. Wow, is that really what happened? Yes, she's exactly right. Wait a minute, why are you asking Anichan for confirmation? No, no reason. Just wanted to be sure. <laughs> Let me tell you, this isn't all I know. I also know when the temple was completed, the grounds around it were larger, and that it completely burned down once. Burned down? The temple? Was it in a war or what? Zzzt. Sorry, it burned down just 60 years ago. It was awesome. Awesome? You mean someone set fire to it? Yeah, in 1950, by a young monk still in training. A monk committed awesome? That's right. The temple was already a famous national treasure at the time, so it caused a huge stir. I, I see. That makes sense. Then, a world-famous author na named Mishima Yukio wrote a novel about it. The name of the novel is, of course, Kinkakuji! Wow, Akira, you know, really know a lot about the Kinkaku-ji. I told you I know a lot about it. So, have you read the novel? N no Oh, dear. Mishia, Mishima's... Mishi, <laughs> Mishima Yukio's Kinkaku-ji has been translated into many other languages, so you should read it if you get a chance. Sure I will. You probably wrote it after visiting the place for himself, so it'll probably be more interesting now than if I read it before. I'll be sure to look around for it when I get home. I... I think I might try to read it when I get home too. <laughs> I see. I think you would get a lot out of it, Akira. <sighs> the Kinkakuji, huh? The walls are stuck with gold leaf, so it's as gold as the name suggests. I'd heard that in U that ancient Europe referred to Japan as Japan, the land of gold. But looking at this, I can see why Marco Polo would have felt that way. What do you think of Kyoto so far? Let's see. At first I wasn't really seeing the town's history and culture at all. But the more we walk around, the more I feel the traditional atmosphere seeping in all over. That's right! Kyoto has a lot of temples and shrines, so you can walk from temple to temple then shrine to shrine. Just walking around can give you a deep impression of the town. Yeah, that's really true. But, how do I say this? It's more than that. There's... Like, even among the smallest shops in town, so many of them sell traditional craft goods. So that gives me the impression that, of a town that values its history. That's true. While Kyoto continues to expand, the city as a whole does protect its traditions. I think that's what makes it amazing. Preserving its history while taking in the new air. Eh? But now that I think about it, I think Tokyo is a sim similar sort of atmosphere. With Kyoto, it just feels a whole lot sharper. When I think about it that way, Kyoto really is like a representation of Japan itself. Ah, that's it. There's one thing that surprised me in coming to Kyoto. Surprised you? What is it? You know, the language. Language? Ah, I see. Because it's not like Tokyo Japanese. That's right. It's a dialect, right? The accent and the words people use he here use. It's nothing like the Japanese I know. That's true. People in Kyoto and nearby Osaka and Kobe speak what's called Kansai-ben, 
You know, if you've ever watched As a Manga Dao, considering you're a manga freak, anime freak, you probably would have known that. Kansai Ben. Yes, specifically Kobe and Saka, and a uh, specifically Kobe and Osaka and Kyoto all have their own dialects. The term, general term for it is Kansai Ben. Kansai Ben, I see. It's hard for even native Japanese to imitate Kansai Ben. It's a unique way of speaking. I see, but how should I say? It feels like it has nuances that I don't hear in Japanese of Tokyo. That's true. It's fast-paced and kind of funny. That's right. When you listen to it on an, on an exchange, it almost sounds like they might burst out laughing. Remember what I said before, that Kyoto was the capital of Japan long ago? While that was going on, the city of Osaka was de also developing next door. Osaka developed as a merchant city. They based their lives around merchant culture. So I think their language developed around the interaction between a shop owner and the customer. Making the customer feel comfortable is also so, is so important in the business world. You mean, they make them laugh so they, can, so they relax and feel more like buying things? It's just my own speculation. But I wonder if it might not be true. The real Kansai has done a lot to develop comedians and comedy culture, so you might hear Kansai Ben on TV too. Now that I think about it, it sounds really cute when girls speak it too. Oh my god, this guy. Hmm, we don't speak Kansai Ben. Does that mean you don't think we're cute? Th that's not it. That's not what I was trying to say at all. So you're saying, you wish we both spoke Kansai Ben? That's right, exact- I mean, that's exactly the same complaint. Hehehe, <laughs> without even- without, even without speaking Kansai Ben, I think we make a good comedy team, don't you? Anyway, let's go one last place today. It's very close to where we are now. What kind of temple is it this time? Oh my, we're not going to a temple. Really? Then where are we? Whoa, you're up close again. Ta-da! This is Kyoto's premier entertainment district, Gion. Wow, but the buildings still have an old, refined feeling to them. The town of Gion is the gateway to the Yasaka Shrine. It's basically a town that sprang up along the road to the shrine. The name Gion comes from the fact that the Yasaka Shrine was once known as the Gion Shrine. I see. So is there something on this street? Like what? Well, it's, certain, it's certainly a very beautiful street, and it has a refined, refined atmosphere. But isn't there like a famous building? Oh. Yeah, there's nothing like that here. But in its place... In its place? Ah, look, there, walking towards us. Walking? Metal Gear! A nuclear equipped walking battle tank. Ah! There's a woman walking towards us. Oh, so this is where all the women in Japan are. Or just this one. Tiny red lips on a face made up in white. And such a beautiful kimono. Is that a high class geisha? Sort of. But Geisha is only for Tokyo. In Kyoto, they're called Geiko. Geiko. Yes, and young apprentice Geiko are known as Maiko. She looks young, so she's probably a Maiko. Ah, she just turned to us and bowed. She's so cute. Hey, Anichan, I hear back in the day Maiko were girls around 10 years old. Is that true? Yes, that is what they say. Ten years old. They started that young. Yeah, because Maiko and Geiko would play instruments at banquets and sing and dance. They were like flowers, used to add a life to a party. And men of high standing and rank would come to them. So in order to keep them from offending anyone, they received strict instruction and discipline and manners from a very young age. That's the kind of system it was. So, for all its beauty, their world was a harsh one too. Yes, but these days it's seen as problematic to make children work so hard. Nowadays you can't begin micro-training until you finish school. I saw on TV once before too. There are fewer and fewer women who want to become micro these days. I guess that's true in all countries. Huh?
Well, we don't... Surely Maiko is specific to Japan, so what the hell is he getting at? Oh. Jobs that were standing long ago are gradually declining. It's too bad, but... Yeah. Huh. But then the TV said that more people want to do it nowadays compared to before. But they say that the training is so strict that many people just up and quit. Just because you want it doesn't mean you'll succeed. Oh, what a great life lesson, Jack. But Maiko and Geiko are a part of an amazing culture. There must be people who want to carry it on. They're called Gaijin. That's it. As long as we're here, why don't we call it Geiko Sen tonight and... Unfortunately, that's not possible. Huh? Why not? The girls will refuse first-time customers. Most people have to re be referred by an existing customer. I see. There are some exceptions lately. I hear there are some events where you can hire a Geico for a brief period of time. But it probably takes a lot of money, right? I see. I guess that's true. Yeah, I understand that. It was just an idea. When you say it like that, I can tell you're really upset about it. I told you. I was joking. Leave me alone. I don't think you were. Uh, anyway, as long as we're here, we should stop by the Osaka Shrine and then back to our hotel. Okay. Okay. Oh, we don't even get to see the shrine this time. Phew. We visited the Yasaka Shrine, which is beautiful. Our, ho our hotel might be more humble than the halls where the Geiko perform, but it's still a nice place. The food in Kyoto tastes completely different to the food in Tokyo, too. Kyoto is a nice place, not, in not at all inferior to Tokyo. Just one day doesn't seem like enough to experience it all. But tomorrow, I go back to K Tokyo, and in three days' time, I go home. I've got to make the most of Japan in the time I've got left. Day five? Really? No overnight escapades? I'm actually quite surprised by that. I was convinced that the game was going to go there, considering it's already been it twice. Ugh, another beautiful day. They said on the news yesterday that it was set to rain in Tokyo. So the good weather followed me on this trip. Should be a good sign of things to come, right? Nah. Okay, day two in Kyoto. Let's get started. Our next destination is a temple called the Ro Ryoanji. Roan Ryoanji. The Ryoanji is a magnificent temple, of course, but it has a number of other charms to the people who visit it. It has other charms? What do you think? Hmm. What could it be? I give up. I have no idea. The answer is... There's the entry fee there. Well, this one's more expensive. Is it a courtyard? This rock garden. <laughs> this guy is not impressed. I just paid three euros to stare at some rocks. How dare you. Okay, get on with it. Wait, why are you being so quiet? Ah, sorry. I got kind of sucked in. Anyway, how do I say this? A garden made out of rocks and sand with no trees in it. It feels kind of empty. And it sounds strange, but when I look at it enough, it starts to look like islands in the ocean. Wow, that's amazing! Huh? What? What's amazing? This type of garden is called a Karas... Karasan Sui. As you say, it symbolizes mountains and water without the use of water. I see. I think you stumbled upon its meaning without realizing it. So maybe I got a little closer to being Japanese in these few days. <laughs> maybe so. Anyway, who created this garden? It's such a high level of artistry. It must be someone famous, right? To tell the truth, no one really knows. Really? Yes. They say it was made sometime in the 15th century, and there are varying theories as to its creator, but no one knows for sure. I see. That's not the only thing we don't know. Huh? There's another mystery about it? Take a good look. How many stones do you see in the garden? Stones? Mm. One, two, three... Are there 14 in all? That's what it looks like, right? Yeah. Ah, but since you asked that, it must mean... Yes, there are really 15 stones in all. Wait, let me count again. 
One, two, three. Ah, you're right, there's another stone hidden behind that one. The garden was designed so there's only one spot where you can see all 15 stones at once. Wow. The store in the Vatican was built so that the two rings of pillars line up perfectly when you stand in the center of the plaza. This is kind of the opposite effect. The garden itself is built on a slight decline, so the height from so the height of the stones in the back will seem to change height from diffs from some angles. There are optical illusions like that all around the garden. That's amazing. What a complicated garden. But I could never have come up with something so complicated. It feels like it must be imbued with all uh, with all sorts of deep meaning. Naturally. So, what meanings are hidden in it? You need to figure it out for yourself. That's the meaning of Sam. What? But that's mean. Oh, come on, Aki-chan. Stop teasing him and tell him the truth. Huh? The truth? <laughs> Sorry. To tell you the truth, no one knows what the deepest meaning of... knows the deepest meaning of this garden. Really? Yes, there are many theories, of course, but no one really knows which of the theories are really true. We may never really know. I see. But like Aki-chan said, because there is no answer, that means you can think it out for yourself. That part of it is really the meaning of Zen. I know, right? That's why I really meant it when I said that. Liar. Hmm? What's with that look? You got something to say? Uh, not at all. Hmm? We've been walking around all, a lot all day, but... Hmm, there's so much to see in Kyoto. There is. We've only been hitting up the main spots. You can't see it all in just a day or two. We better get out of here before evening. We have time to see about one more place. Which means the next thing we see will be our last. That's right! And I know just the place for us to go! The place for us to go? Where is that? Hee <laughs> That is... That's the entry fee. Wow! Okay. Now this is a new level of cost. It's the sky. She just kicked us in the chest and ran off with our money. Here! Yeah! <laughs> I get it. Th this is... This is the Usumas Usumasu Movie Village. It's a theme park, a recreation of an Edo period village. Amazing. I never knew this was here. It takes about 30 minutes from, by train from Kyoto, but I really wanted to show it to you. I see. These are fairly rare in Japan, but they're quite fun. Especially... A recreation of ancient Japan, I see. Then this is... <laughs> You're in a daze. Huh? Ah, sorry. I just... Don't worry about it. I'm just happy that you seem to be having fun. Yeah, I'm really glad we came here. Thanks. Uh, sure. <laughs> She's shy. Uh, Onichan, stop it! You're doing it again! <laughs> ah, that reminds me. You called this a movie village earlier. Ah, originally a lot of Japanese movie co companies would film here. Because a lot of our movies back then were Jidai Geki. Jidai Geki, literally period films, often used to refer to samurai movies. So most of the Jidai, De Jidai Geki ended up being filmed here. Then a part of the set was opened up for the public to enjoy, which is why it's called the Uzumasa Movie Village. That's right! I see. That's interesting. What's really amazing is they didn't just recreate the surface of the buildings. You can actually walk around and experience the town for yourself. Wow. So what kind of things can you do? Let's see. For instance, there are exhibits about the filming process. Hmm. Hmm. And you can experience the traditional culture of Kyoto. I see, I see. And there are Chanbara shows too. Chanbara, a genre of action-oriented samurai films, referring to the clashing of swords. Chanbara. I played on a Chanbara. Can we go see that? You don't just watch them. They'll really teach you the Chanbara style. Whoa, you can really try Chanbara? 
I'm not sure about that, but we can at least do that. That? What's that? It's... You'll see when we get there. That's right, so let's go! Cosplay. Huh? Wait, is this... Well, which do you want? You have to choose. Actually, why don't you choose for us, too? Choose for you? Me? Yeah... Let's do it that way. Oh, okay then. And let me warn you, you better choose seriously. Ah, uh, I know. Hmm, let's see, for the two of you... Uh-oh. Sixty bucks. I'm ready. Are you guys still changing? Well, women always take longer to get ready. <sighs> Again, try saying it out loud, you jackass. See how long you survive. Here we are! Huh? Well, I guess if you want to see how they look, what kind of terrible outfit he's most likely chosen for them, I guess you'll have to join me next time. See you then. Thanks for watching. And bye.